A candidate for political office commissioned a poll. His staff received responses from 900 likely voters, and 55% of them said they would vote for the candidate. The staff then conducted a simulation of 1,000 more polls of 900 voters, assuming that 55% of voters would vote for their candidate. The output of the simulation is shown in the diagram below. And given this output, and assuming a 95% confidence level, the margin of error for the poll is closest to what? So the first thing to understand is this table, all right? And the first thing you have to believe is that these bars all add up to a thousand. You can see there is a number of bars up here that have a value of 30, the ones that fall right around 55%. These are the polls where 55% of the people voted, let, voted yes. To either side, there's some outliers. There's maybe three or four polls that resulted in around 61% of people voting yes, and the same amount over here that resulted in around 49% of people voting yes. So that's what that graph represents. And what the 95% confidence level represents is that's a researcher set parameter that says how much they trust their data. That says that out of a thousand simulated polls, you're pretty sure that 950 of them, 95%, represent reality, which means they contain the true mean. That's what this is about, the true mean. How much can you trust that the 55% of 900 likely voters polled is represented of the many hundreds of thousands of people, I'm sure, that are in a given district, right? We are talking about a sample mean plus or minus a certain margin of error. And of course, we're looking for that margin of error so that we can report, oh, we're pretty sure that 55% of people are going to vote for you, uh, plus or minus a few percentage points. Because nobody is so sure of their sample-derived data as to say that, well, it couldn't possibly be more or less than 55. We know that exactly 55% of people are going to vote for you. You can't say that. But you are 95% sure that the data you gathered, or you're sure that 95% of the data you gathered reflects reality. So the margin of error is going to come from how far on either side of the supposed mean are you allowed to go? How far do you need to go in order to trust your data at the 95% confidence level? So we're going to need to capture a range. We simply need to capture 95% of the total polls. And the way we're going to do this is I guess we'll analyze each percentage point one at a time. We can start with 0.01 or 1%. Is our margin of error 1%? If you scale this up, let's see, 56, 57, 58, and 54, 53, 52. If you allow yourself to go 0 0.01 to either side, that gives you this range here that I'm about to highlight in blue. And the question is, do you believe that 95% of all the data is captured inside? 95% of the polls is captured inside this block here. And no, probably half, a lot of them for sure because of how concentrated the data is around the 55% mark, but definitely not 95%. So we're going to have to throw that option out. The next thing is 0 0.03 on either side. We can go 1, 2, 3, and we can get this range here. So do you believe that 95% of the data is encapsulated inside here? Maybe. Maybe. I'd probably want to go a little bit further, but I might believe that 0 0.03 or 3% is a decent margin of error. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on to that one and see what the other options have for me. Another option I'm given is 0 0.06 to either side, plus or minus 0 0.06. Well, that's, well, all the way out here. That captures everybody. Is 95% of the data within here? Certainly there is, but the problem is that 100% of the data is in there. And nobody operates a poll at 100% confidence level. So we can't take that. We do not want to include anybody. And there's a pretty sizable difference between 95% and 100% when you're talking about a normal shaped distribution of data. So definitely not that one. And finally, 
is it 55% plus or minus 12%? This plus or minus 0.12, well, that's all the way out here, right? That's going to be twice, twice what it was for a margin of error of 0 0.06, and that includes all of this data, which is like, you know, I don't want to say more than everybody, because in reality, these lines no, never really touch the x-axis, but it's not much of a better answer than 0 0.06. It just includes too much. So what I'm going to conclude then, based on the answers that have been given to me, is that 0 0.03 is the best approximation of the margin of error with this 95% confidence level. You can say that plus or minus 0 0.03 or 3% captures 95% of the data around the mean fairly well. So we would be able to go back to our guy and say, hey look, we think that 55% of people will vote for you plus or minus 3%. Could be 58%, could be 52%. But we're 95% sure that it's within there. More on this. When a politician sets out to find out how many people will be voting in an upcoming election, he would love to be able to have his people call up the entire district and have all the voters speak honestly about how they will be voting. But this is never practical or accomplished. So often in statistical studies we use a sample, right? A small part of the whole population of interest to try and represent the behavior of the population whole. A confidence level is a researcher determined percentage level that states how confident they can be that the data they are gathering from the small sample is truly representative of the population. To have a confidence level of 100% means that if your sample restricted poll or survey or data gathering method is repeated under the same conditions and methods, the results will be representative of the population every single time. Nobody is that confident of the data gathering method, so 90 to 99% confidence levels are, are seen often in practical statistical studies. This problem features a 95% level, meaning that of all the polls taken or simulated as it were, the researchers are sure that 95% of them represent reality and 5% do not. Okay, so the 95% confidence level gives rise to a corresponding confidence interval. The expected mean of the population plus or minus a margin of error. We can be sure 95% of the time that this interval of values contains the true mean answer for voters in the district.